What's good, YouTube nights? As promised, let's bust out part two of my top 50 raw books as tagged by the comic crypt of Castle Hills. Bumping a little Cameron Paul mega mix in the background. Rest in peace to great Cameron Paul. Representing the Bay Area to the fullest. Master mixer, master remixer, mix it records. This is a mix it uh, a mix it medley mix from 1992, man. So uh, grew up on Cameron Paul. If you grew up in the Bay Area or if you were a DJ in the early 80s, Cameron Paul was the absolute man. So uh, last week, I have a tendency to babble on and talk more than I really should, to be honest with you. Uh, it gets me into trouble more times than not, but let's get right to it, boys and girls. We're going to finish it off for the top 50. This is the remaining 25 in no particular order whatsoever, but just books that I feel are uh, big keys or uh, you know sentimental uh, reasons are in my top 50. This is the remaining 20, uh, 50. So let's start off with number... 26 this book i've always loved huge fan of john byrne this is of course one of the best tandems ever in comic books uh john byrne and chris claremont this of course is the first appearance of weapon alpha aka vindicator aka guardian later on so obviously he is the leader of the alpha flight team but he appeared in x-men 109 uh, you know, a good dozen or so issues before the actual first full appearance of Alpha Flight. And you should know that was segueing into something. <laughs> um, this, of course, is uncanny. I'm not even going to count them. I know there's 25 issues in here, so I'm just going to go through them. You can play at home yourself and number them yourself, but uh, this would be number 27. But anyway, I already know there's 25 in this stack, so I'm just going to go with it. Uh, Uncanny X-Men number 120. This is another great one of the, I, in my opinion, the greatest run in comic books history is Giant Size X-Men 1, nine, issue 94, all the way up to 142. That 40, almost 50 run, issue run um, is quite 49 issues, I think. Yeah, 94 to 142. Yeah, with Giant Size X-Men 1. In my Humble opinion, or not so humble, the greatest uh, collection of stories in a 50-issue run ever. Um, you know, everybody has their opinion, but this is really what got me into it. This, of course, is the first appearance of Alpha Flight. And both of these, the re also reasons I put some of these books on here is because of the condition they're in. These have been in my X-Men collection for a long time, and they are still minty fresh. Next up is one really with sentimental value. Um, this is Marvel Age number 41. Uh, Stanley photo cover uh, and just I love this picture Stan Lee because it shows how the young vibrant Stan Lee of the 70s and 80s looked uh, before he, he gave up on his hair and uh, got the fake hair he still you know that's the old receding hairline right there man so I just love this issue if he was alive still I would have got him to sign it but Anyway, so this is always cool. I don't even know how much that's worth, but I still... I think I got that even recently. I think I may have got... I got that from an auction. I forgot whom. I want to say Manny NYC, but uh, we shall see. Uh, next up on the list is something... Probably the most modern book on here. And simply because it is blowing up, man. So this is Hellerism number three. The first full appearance of Punchline. And even though... I have three copies. I'm only counting it as one. You see that? Your boy TiVo don't cheat on these lists. Next up is, um, I love this cover. I absolutely love it. Um, all red cover. This baby is spotless. It is, I mean, great it, man. It is super near minty fresh. Fantastic Four number 75 by the great Stan Lee. Art by uh, Jack Kirby. Inks by Joe Sinnott. Um, what else can you say, man? Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. You know what I mean? Speaking of Fantastic Four, the reason why it's on there, it's not really because it's the first appearance of Claw and he's, you know, it's kind of done in the MCU for now. Maybe he'll be back. But it's also, I love the Fantastic Four. It's a great, it's a key issue and it's uber, uber grade. I mean, for a Silver Age book, I could definitely see this getting a, in the eights, maybe a nine, you know, you know, the Mylar looks, makes it look better than it really is, but who knows? It could be up there. Uh, next up is also a book that is, uh, is the closest I'll ever get to owning, um, 
Warp by Night 32 again. I should have kept it when I had it, but you know, it was a lower grade and I was real stickler for grades, but this is the second best thing. This is the first solo series of uh, Moon Knight. This is uh, Marvel Spotlight number 28 and this baby is in gorgeous condition. I think this book has really room has room to grow, to be honest with you. Look at that. That is gorgeous, man. Um, I also have War of My Night number 33, but it's nowhere near this condition, which is near mint. So I have a feeling this book will pick up, you know, when the series picks up. Everybody who can't afford the other one anymore, well, they'll start getting this. Maybe they already have. I have no I haven't looked up the price in a while. Uh, as you as far as well as you know. My favorite characters are Silver Surfer, Doctor Strange, and Thor, with uh, Shang-Chi and Iron Fist right behind them. But those are my top three. My whole trilogy is Silver Surfer, Doctor Strange, and Thor. Um, so I, I don't have the first appearance of Journey in, or Thor, Journey of Mystery 83, maybe one day. But this is a... I love this comic because not, not really any... But look at that condition. There's just a few issues, but you know, this square bound, it's hard. This has never been pressed either, by the way. And that's why this book makes the list because it's really high grade. And I need to uh, grade this because this is the only of the four, first four issues of Surfer Surfer. This is the only one that has been graded. I have Surfer Surfer 1, 3, and 4 uh, graded. Uh, this one will be next to out to my boy Rocket Comics. And as I alluded to about Doctor Strange... This is Strange Tales number 118. Believe it or not, this is the first cover appearance of Doctor Strange. And that little square down there, I know. Technically, it is the first uh, cover appearance of Doctor Strange and Strange Tales, even though it's a minor one. Doc Human Torch was still getting all the love at that time. But eventually, Doctor Strange popularity would take over, and it would be all about Doctor Strange and Strange Tales. I mean, how can you not be about Doctor Strange when it's called Strange Tales and Human, Human Torch got kicked to the curb but this is also a beautiful high grade copy and I'm going to get this graded too to go along with my keys uh, Doctor Strange issues that I get slabbed next up are a few books that um, you saw recently um, and I'm a huge fan of Defenders this goes on theirs because this is a beautiful high grade I think I got this in my last haul um, luckily I do this now because most of these books well, these are for sure are going off the CGC. This is Defenders number one. And if you have Defenders number one, you also have to have a high grade copy of Marvel Feature number one, the first appearance of the best non team team ever, the Defenders, Doctor Strange, Submariner, and the Hulk. I got two copies of this. I'm going to send them both to get graded. I don't care if it's the Defenders movie show or anything ever coming. I just love the Defenders. The whole series is just super goofy and crazy, supernatural goodness, man. And. That's why those are on there. Next up is a book that I was looking for a while. I had a graded copy, and then I sold it, and then I got another one. Boom. Tomb of Dracula, number one. The first appearance of Dracula in the 616, the Marvel 616. This is, I think I can get a good grade up there. There's a little chipping up there on the top. Uh, outside of that, I think it's a solid eight, eight and a half. Maybe it depends on how much leniency they're going to give me for a Bronze Age book, but this book looks beautiful. Um, I mean, if you've been watching The Lords, you know we've been specking that Dra Dracula is coming. Even even though the Hulu stuff's been pushed back, trust me, the horror and supernatural stuff is still coming, regardless if it's Hulu or Disney+. Plus. My guess is it's still going to be Hulu, because then they can go kind of a bit more scary and more dark and supernatural, so I'm hoping it can be that. Next up on the list is Journey in a Mystery Annual, number one, the first appearance of Hercules. That's right, everybody's favorite skirt-wearing strongman, half, I do believe he's a demigod, meaning he's half a deity and half human. So, uh, yeah, this is books I'm picking up a lot. Uh, I'm finally glad I was able to get a copy. It's not, uh, it's about a four and a half, maybe a four. It's got some issues on the spine because of its double the butt double bound spine, but I'm happy for it, man. I finally got a copy. It was one of those things where I have never had a copy of the first Mirrors of Hercules in my entire 30 plus years of collecting. Next up is a book that I forgot I had, man. This is another super high grade copy of King Size Avengers Annual number 10, the first appearance of Rogue. 
Um, and you know, Rogue is this book has been picking up recently, and so I decided to dust it off. I totally forgot I had it, but you know, this is one of those books that everybody should have in their collection. Next up is a book you don't expect in my collection, but it's high grade, and it, I needed some DC stuff in here, man. This is the first appearance of uh, Kyle Rayner. Correct me if I'm wrong. Kyle Rayner version of Green Lantern. Uh, he's going to be coming over to the new HBO Max um, Green Lantern series, along with some other ones. Everyone except Hal Jordan and John Stewart are going to be in this show. So there you go. You heard it from me first. Next up is a book that is super, super cool. And you don't see that often, man. This, of course, is from Tower Comics Thunder Agents number one. Uh, this, I believe, although it's a 25 cent issue, I want to say this is a Silver Age issue. It's, it's from the 60s. It's 25 cent because it was double sided. Um, interesting thing about this book, man, is uh, about four years ago, man, that's when I really was truly into speculating. There was going to be a Thunder Agents panel at San Diego Comic Con to announce that they were making DC Warner Brothers was making a Thunder Agents either movie or show. So I swapped, snooped this, swapped this up, gobbled this up, excuse me. And uh, and the interesting thing is when I look back at the San Diego Comic Con panel like a uh, month later, it was gone. <laughs> oh shit! Damn. Well, now it's a seven point oh. I'm just kidding. Uh, look out! This book is gorgeous man for those who like robots in the cover so here's a little history on this book is really pissed me off is as i was opening it one time see that fucking tape pool man i know it's just a little thing but you don't understand how clean this book was before that little itty bitty thing man it may take off half a grade for that but still hasn't been pressed yet and it's just one of those weird wonky books who has a damn thunder ages number one from Tower Comics in their collection. So, you know what? I think it's pretty cool. Plus, it's old. Old doesn't necessarily mean collectible. In this case, it does. Next up is a book I really dig and I think is undervalued, uh, underappreciated maybe, is Astonishing Tales number 25, the first appearance of Deathlock, the Demolisher. I remember this book got some hype when Deathlock came to Agents of Plot, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, I bought this, I think, a year ago, and that was the best time to buy it because I you guarantee he's going to be coming back. But either way, it's still a very cool character, um, very anguished and all the stuff that he's been through. Is, I mean, it, they showed a little bit on Age of Shield, but still a great book. And another one of those things in the collection that is super high grade. If you notice, I am a I'm not a bit snobby. I am very snobby when it comes to raw comics and grades like it has to be. I have certain criteria. If Silver Age, I have a bit more leniency on. I can deal with VGs. But if once I get into Bronze Age, it better be like VF plus at least or VF at least at the very least for Silver Age. Copper and shit. Um, modern, it better be near mint. Next up, this book is interesting in my collection is that it was a long journey to get. Um, this in a companion piece with Captain Marvel 25 through 34, uh, some Silver Surfer issues. This is a must have for anybody who collects Thanos issues, anything to do with Thanos and the Avengers. This is the book to get. This kind of starts the whole thing that kicks off. I'm, I'm trying to remember if this comes out before or after Captain Marvel 25. It may have come out before it and then they continue the Thanos War storyline into Captain Marvel. But this book had eluded me for so long, especially when the Infinity War stuff was out, because this book was super hot. All that and the Captain Marvel 25 to 34 were super hot as well. Almost at the end, boys and girls. Almost to the end. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. All right. I'm going to do these two in a row because they follow a theme of my collecting habits. This is Daredevil number 100. And yes, it is a special 100th issue. Like I said, I love anniversary issues and I especially love the era of copper and, and bronze and some silver age, especially, and then some modern books where they celebrated anniversary issues, number 50, number 100, number 200, 300, so on and so forth. Now it's just giant milestones like 600 or 500 or 1,000 with detective comics and action comics. But this one is no really key issue in it, but it kind of shows Daredevil's rogues galleries on there, man. Uh, uh, bonus points. I'll give anybody a Marvel no prize if you can name all the villains on the cover because you got to be a hardcore Marvel or D Daredevil fan to recognize Daredevil's um, rogues gallery. This book is super clean too, man. I 
you know, you know, when I, when I run out of start stuff to grade, I'll start grading these anniversary issues. Hey, look at that. We we're just talking about anniversary issues. What I love about this one also is this one. Remember that? Who tried to get that Toys R Us shopping spree but uh, failed? I don't even think anybody ever won. Anyway, this is special double size anniversary issue. It says it right on the cover, man. Avengers number 200 by the great George Perez with his signature right there. So that is cool, man. I don't have many George Perez. You know, the ironic thing is. I don't have many George Perez signed comics, but I have a George Perez signed Funko of Deathstroke. So that, that's neither here nor there, but pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. I don't have many raw signed comics either, man. Uh, most of them are all yellow label because I'm a strict believer. Uh, if you're going to get it signed, get it authenticated, you know, or a witness. Another early issue of Thor along with, you know, Warlock him. I, oh, I can't believe I didn't show those. Anyway. Yeah, just goes to show. I'm running out of could have fit more books in there. I I totally forgot about my Warlock Force issues and Warlock number one, Marvel Premiere number one. Oh man, that sucks. Anyway, oh yeah, those are slabbed. Are they slabbed? Yeah, they're slabbed. Never mind. I'm tripping, man. Anyway, another early appearance of him and all that crazy stuff. His name is. Uh, this one is another one of the few DC books I'm in. But you know what? I've had this on for a while. When uh, when I first heard the Sham movie was coming out, I bought it because I said it's only a matter of time for ISIS comes. And sure enough, we uh, had on our spec list a while ago that uh, ISIS was being developed for her own solo series and possibly part of Shazam sequels, either two or three. Beautiful near mint copy here as well. Next up. You guys ought to know what this issue is. So this is another one of those books. It's a cameo guest appearance and also a part of the Thanos storylines that I was collecting all those comics that had anything to do with Thanos. King Size Annual, number seven, beautiful near mint copy. These books are a lot easier to... Look at that spine. Uh, you know what? I'm running out of time. I don't want to keep on pulling videos out. This is approaching 17 minutes already. All right. So next up is the cameo and first appearance to make the last two books on the list. This is Avengers number 47 um, and 48. So I believe this is the first appearance and this is the first cover appearance of our friend, the Black Knight. Not only does he do scoops on the Lords of Longbox channel, but he's also going to be in the upcoming Eternals movie and possibly his own solo series coming up. So that's up. That's it in a uh, nutshell, boys and girls. My top 50 raw comics. Uh, I remember somebody asking for my top 50 slabs. Maybe I'll do that as well. That is a whole lot easier to do because they're all my slabs are sitting in a box. All these are in random boxes. It's going to take me four days to put all these back. But maybe it'll be a good excuse to sort everything. So um, now that the video is over, I will tag some folks. Uh, first of all, thank you and shout out to Comic Crypto Castle Hills for tagging me in this video. A bunch of people have already done their videos, so I don't know who to tag, to be honest with you. So I am going to tag, I don't know, uh, I know Big Easy is already going to do I don't want to do, tag some people who already did it. Um, so I will tag Two Brothers Comics. I will tag, let me think about this. Uh, there's so many of you out there, I don't know. Um, I will tag Keep It Thorough, you know what I mean? And I'm going to tag my man, Market 316. He hasn't been a, done a video in a while. So look at that. I tagged, <laughs> tagged three NY words. But the, that's the fam, so I'm going to tag them. So uh, Market 316. Oh, my bad. Keep it thorough. And um, you know what? I'm going to do King of the Golden State. So there you go. King of the Golden State, so we keep it West Coast, East Coast. You know what I mean? Uh, King of the Golden State, Market 316, and keep it thorough, man. You guys are tagged to show your top 50. You can do raw or slab, or you can do uh, whatever, man. Top 50, whatever you want. Uh, Justin uh, uh, Nemesis Prime did top 50 variants. So there you go. That's a lot of variants. I do 50 of them. All right, boys and girls, I am done. Enjoy your week. We will be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific to do our cover price top 10 list. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff dropping. I'm going to be doing a live sale this Saturday, 2 p.m. Pacific on the Lords of the Longbox channel, live from Comic Tunes and Toys in Tustin, California. We're going to do a live auction to help them get rid of some stuff out there to help out the shop. And, uh, and also, we got some other stuff that I'll probably talk about tomorrow because I don't want to take up too much time now, but... Uh, it's got to be some good stuff, man. So till next time, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.